Hi, this is Mike with AskTractorMike.com. Today I'm going to show you how to install a diverter valve on your tractor. I just got through installing one of these on my tractor. My last video I told you how to get all the pieces and parts together for the installation. Today we're going to get right on the installation. And this is a kit that is designed for weekend farmers like me, hobby farmer guys, to install on their compact tractors with just a few basic tools and really basic hydraulic flow knowledge. And what's in this kit, I'll show you real quick. The instructions. Here's a set of brackets to put the valve on that's going to divert the flow. whole bunch of fittings and some hardware to put the, uh, the valve on the bracket. And then a, a, a wiring harness and this is a button that mounts on the on the joystick of the tractor. And finally Here's the money part right here. This is a hydraulic valve. And basically what this does, it takes the oil that's flowing in this port, and without the button pushed, it comes out this port, but when you push the button, it comes out these ports. Here's all the hardware laid out. And the first thing we're gonna do is to mount the valve to the bracket. You'll notice as I'm installing this, I've got a piece of rubber underneath the, uh, the bracket for the diverter valve. And this is just some of that, it's, it's, ma it's a magnetic rubber material. Uh, it's, it's, it's magnetized on one side, it's rubber on the other. And I'm, I'm cutting it to, to go underneath the valve uh, brackets so I don't uh, screw up the, the finish of my loader. I want it to, if I ever take it off and put it on another tractor, and if I ever trade tractors, I'll probably do that. I, I, I don't want to have a big mark here, so I'm cutting that to size to put underneath there. I'm going to install it on the outer part of my loader arm here. Uh, in other words, it's going, to, it's going to mount right here. And some of you are going to say, well, that's, that's out in the open where, where the hoses can get in contact with limbs and stuff. I get that. I would rather have it mounted somewhere uh, uh, more protected. But I don't know how to do that. There's, there's, there's really tight quarters inside, and it would be difficult to mount it in there. And, and when you think about it, you know, my loader bracket is not scratched up from limbs. The tires and the loader bucket stick out further, uh, and, and, and they're fine. So I, I think this will be okay up here, but there will be hoses coming out from this valve and going down to the front of the loaders. In the kit, the bolts that are, that are supplied could be too long. If, you're, if your loader is a little thinner than mine, these bolts could be a little bit too long. So you may have to get some shorter bolts to go here. Now, one thing you want to watch, this bolt right here on the, on the, on the bottom left-hand corner and on, on both sides could be a little bit of an issue because right now it's fine and the, and, and the loader boom is all the way down. But if you, if you pick the loader boom and push down on the front of the tractor to raise the front end off the ground, this is going to go back into here. So you want to be real careful that you've got clearance in there to let that go. And what I may do is use a really thin washer on both sides and then cut the threads off on the end to keep that, if, it, if you have to go back in there, it'll, it'll still be okay and it won't hurt anything. The next step of the process is to, to mount the button that activates the diverter valve. And, and I'm going to mount it on the inside of my joystick, so when I've got my hand on my joystick, it will be this hand, my thumb will control that button and divert the flow of oil, and I think that'll, that'll work out well. Now, what I'm going to try to do is pull up this grommet here where my joystick is and run my wires down through this plate here underneath the tractor. And in order to do that, I'd like to go through that grommet, but that has to go through the grommet. And this has to go through the, the fuse. And this is going to go to the, the fuse block of my tractor, and it has its own fuse. And this goes to plug in to go to the, uh, to the valve to, to uh, activate the diverter. And 
There it is. Whoo! Okay, we've got the uh, the activator, the diverter button mounted, and I got it right where I want it, so I'm going to zip tie it onto the joystick. Here's the wire coming down from my joystick. This is going to go to the power, and I'm going to feed that underneath the floor mat so it stays protected. It'll be in between this rubber mat and the metal. And this is the wire right here that goes to the uh, diverter control, and it's going to plug in right here. So, and I've, there's, they supply way more than plenty of that. In fact, I'll have to kind of wrap it around to get it out of the way. So I'm going to feed it under the floor mat and have it come up right here. And we're going to connect that in the back here. Like so. And just kind of feed that up underneath there. And then this is the power wire. And it's going to go the same, same direction underneath the floor mat. And it's headed to a power source. Alright, just to show you where I'm at so far, there's the gray wire uh, that goes to the diverter right there. Where I've got it snaked from, I've got it coming out under the floor mat and I've got it going underneath this shield and around down away from the hydro pedal. It does a little loop there and then it's coming up the side of the loader and that's not where it's going to end up, but that's where I'm going to stop with it until I get my hydraulic lines on. I've got it tied here to the bracket that holds the diverter on. And I'm going to try to tuck that away, but I'm going to leave. They, they, they give you a lot of wire with this. And I'm going, to, I'm going to leave a loop of wire in case sometime I forget to uh, disconnect this if I'm taking my loader off. And so when I start to raise this up that ought to uncoil this loop of wire and it'll tell me whoa you need to take that loose when you take your loader off okay i'm going to take my hydraulic hoses and run them underneath the loader and kind of parallel to the hoses that are already there and when i when i've kind of figured out where i want everything i'll, I'll zip tie them together and that'll be a little bit later on. But they're going to go something like that and then come out down here at the front. These uh, hoses, incidentally, I debated on how long to get them. I may have gotten them a little too long. They're 96 inches long. You'll have to measure for your tractor. I thought about taking them back and getting 7 feet or 6 feet even. But if I ever forget to take, if I'm taking my grapple off and I forget to disconnect the hoses. I'd like to have a little extra so when I start to pull away they get tight and it reminds me to uh, unhook them before I pull them out. Alright, now I'm going to put my flat face couplers on. That's what they look like. That's what's on the front of a skid loader and that's what I recommend. You can put any kind of hydraulic fittings you want on but those those are the ones we always used when I worked in the dealership world and they seem to work the best. I'm going to dummy this up first to show you how this works. I'm taking 3 8 inch pipe thread to pipe thread, putting it right here. And I'll put uh, pipe joint cement on it later and tighten it up, but I'm just going to show you how the plumbing works. From there, I put an elbow going down that was supplied with the kit. Now underneath here, I'm going to put the elbow on first that was supplied with the kit right there. Now, we're going to go from half inch female JIC to 3 8 inch pipe. And this is JIC, so the hoses are going to come up under here and go in here. And again, I haven't tightened that yet, but I will. And then here, we're going to go from 3 8 to 3 8 male pipe thread. It's going to go here. On the end of that, we'll go our 3 8 female pipe to JIC female pipe. So the hoses will come around here and go in here. These, these hoses. 
right here will go in there and they'll go under this hydraulic cylinder here. Now on this side I'm going to dummy everything up to show you what it looks like. First we're going, this was supplied with a kit uh, from 3 8 inch to 3 8 inch pipe thread. Here we're going to put a little extension on which is just a uh, 3 8 to 3 8 pipe thread. I'm going to put it on here and that will enable us to put the elbow here to clear this other elbow get the hose that's headed down. So I got a nice kind of professional look going here. We'll put it all together. Okay, all that's left here is to curl these fittings back up and put them on it on these lines. And we're done. Last step of the project was snaking a ground wire to a bolt that stuck into the main frame of the tractor, which wasn't any big deal. And then finding power, and I agonized over where to get power. And finally, there's a, a, a wire that goes to the fuel solenoid shutoff, and uh, it is switched. In other words, it's controlled by the key. And I, I wired into the connector there, and I that, that worked out great. When I fired the tractor up, everything worked. Now it takes some time to bleed all of the oil out of the cylinders and your tractor should do that on its own. So, so hold the button and run everything and as soon as it'll, it'll take a few minutes. It's kind of like the end of Apollo 13 where you're waiting for the guys to radio in there okay. It takes a while for that oil to flow, but, but eventually it does and, and, uh, and, you, and, you, uh, and mine worked the first time without any problem. Now a couple of things. First off, Kubota's got a regeneration system. And if you're putting this on a Kubota tractor, you may have to put it in the raise and lower part of your, of your valve. In other words, you may have to find hoses that control the cylinders that raise and lower and, and, and tap into that system. That's, that's on certain Kubotas and no other tractors I know of. Secondly, anytime you're, you're, you're working around hydraulics, always take the pressure off the lines by jiggling your joystick back and forth and forward and back to make sure you take pressure off. And when you're connecting your, your electrical system, make sure you disconnect the battery. So uh, if, you, if you want to know how long this project took me, I'm not a fast mechanic. I, I ponder things and analyze things probably too much. But uh, the, the, uh, putting the, the valve on took an afternoon. Uh, snaking the electrical part around and up to the joystick took an afternoon. And then putting the hoses on and getting everything connected took an afternoon. And... and uh, so, so, you know, you probably could get this all done in a weekend pretty easy if you have the parts there when you start. That, that's the key. I, I had to run back and forth to the local farm store a couple of times and that really slowed me down. And also, I filmed a YouTube channel having to move the stupid camera around and try to get all the shots took a little time as well. If you'd like to order the kit that you see in this video, go to the Tractor Bike Fun Store right here. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honored. Click the Mike Face icon up in the corner. And here's the previous video that shows how I got all the pieces and parts together before I started this process. Make sure you watch that one. Thanks for watching.